the previous module, we talked about two types of speech activities, shop talk and gossip. And uh, we rejected this view that they are exclusively related with men or women. Now, in this module, we will see about arguing, whether there is any role in deciding meaning of this speech activity or not. It is highly gendered speech activity. This is conclusion of the research conducted by different researchers in the field of anthropological linguistics. So we start with this and see whether it is verified by the following talk or not. Sometimes it is defined as coverall. Now, coverall is included in the basic meaning of argument. What happens? When we relate it with men, we exclude coverall from it. And when we relate it with women, we attach coverall with it. Basically, argument means to give reasons to support one's claim. If I say Pakistan has constitutional crisis to prove my claim, to prove my supposition, I have to give evidence. Coverall means, on the other side, coverall means expression of anger, we become sentimental, we react sharply. And what happens as a result of this? Our relations become sour, relations are broken, and people feel bad, especially the communicants who were involved in arguing. Relating argument with reason and coverall with emotion, it creates space for gendering of argument. How? Because usually in gender ideology, it is thought that men are intellectually superior to women. Only they can give reasons. And women are inferior intellectually. They are prone to emotions. They can't argue. And if ever they try to do that, they weep, they become emotional, and they can't argue further. Men argue that the conclusion is that men argue, but women cover all. Which dispute? No, both are essentially disputes. If you offer reasons, so this is verbal dispute, verbal disagreement. And if it is coverall, it can be verbal or even physical. So both are basically disputes, but one dispute is agreement, the other dispute is coverall. So it depends who disputes. If the person, the arguer who does argue, arguing, is a male, so then he, she, this dispute, in other words, he, she does arguing. And if women, she covers, she does bickering. Tutu meme, that is called in Urdu. But this gender based classification of arguing, this is not universal. The communities with this gendered view of arguing are dominated by men. Scientific community, where men are dominated, researcher community, scientists, they are dominated by men. But uh, it may not be case right now when I am talking about this. In previous researches on the basis of which I am talking, this was the case 
that uh, research community that is called scientific community that was dominated by men. And there was often debate on certain issues. They argue with each other. They prove their point of view. So this debate is called argument. In some communities, arguing is a game. The focus is on the claim being argued, not who is the arguer. This situation takes place in debate contests. Colleges and universities, they hold debate contests. And what happens over there? They give a topic. Both arguers offer their, offer their evidences, supports to their claims. This is also a kind of debate. So here, it is looked upon favorably. And uh, it doesn't matter whether the debater is a female student or male student. Here, gender has no role at all. It varies from community to community. Then every argument does not end in connection, does not end in connections, in relations between the participants. If we talk about argument that is done by women, so we say that as a result of that, there is breaking of relations. But see, every argument that is even on some dispute, on some opposing ideas, when it ends, often it is observed that people take it by clapping. It happens often when we see, for example, during election campaigns, U.S. presidents, they talk about their achievements, their contributions, and the opponents, they talk about their own uh, achievements. So they argue with each other. What happens at the end of the argument? There is a thunderous clap. So every argument doesn't end with breaking of relations. So we conclude on the basis of these points that men are intellectually superior by gender ideology. They are superior to women. Women are less rational, so they can argue. Women are emotional and can only shout and cabal. They can't offer reasons. But these perceptions are gendered. Both can argue and both can cover. You daily see in TV talk shows where sometimes even men shout and cover when they don't have any reason to defend their argument.